Okay, so we'll just give a review of what we did. The ratio is always expressed in the simplest terms, as I told you, in case there is any common factor, we cancel out the common factor. Order of terms is important. For example, if I say ratio 7 is to 5 and the ratio 5 is to 7 are not one and the same. Similarly, if I say ratio of the angles of a quadrilateral is 1 is to 2 is to 3 is to 4, it is not the same as saying 3 is to 2 is to 1 is to 4. They are two different things. Then you will get you will get individually, the, right, uh, the angles could be the same, but they would denote the wrong angle, although the measures in general are going to be the same. Then, one more important thing, ratio exists only between quantities of same kind and they should have the same units. And also, we also have the concept of how to see that the final ratio has no particular unit. We can even have fractions as ratios, say for example the ratio of fractions also you have. So for example the ratio of three quantities is half is to 1 by 3 is to 1 by 5. It means that it doesn't mean that one value, you have to be very careful about now slight deviation from this. One thing you need to take care is suppose you say the ratio of two things is 2 is to 3. Now, people have a tendency to take that one quantity is 2 and the other quantity is 3. Although somewhere down the line everybody knows that's not fine but you need to check yourself because if the number, the two quantities are in the ratio 2 is to 3, they could be 4 and 6, even this is possible or they could be 20 and 30 or they could be uh, 10 and 15, so many, a host of such numbers. So whenever you have two things in the ratio a is to b we could take them as ax and bx wherein x is the unknown ratio factor common ratio factor in each of these cases you have multiplied each term the first term is called the antecedent in case of two ratios uh, ratios with two terms and the second term is called the consequent in simple words the first term and second term, in case it's a ratio with two quantities, the first term is called antecedent. That means the one which comes first, consequent, which follows it. So, hence we have the antecedent and consequent. So, if the antecedent and consequent of a particular ratio are A is to B, then each, the actual terms of the ratio, the actual quantities could be anything, which are in the ratio 2 is to 3, but those, any quantities are obtained by multiplying both the antecedent and consequent by the same common ratio factor. Hence, if somebody says, tell me two things are in the ratio 7 is to 5, what are they? Now, this will not give you a definite answer. Some more information has to be given. For example, their difference is 4. Then, you form the equation 7x minus 5x is 4. Hence, you get 2x is 4, so x is 2. In that case, 7x would be 14 and 5x is 10. Hence, the quantities 14 and 10 are in the ratio 7 is to 5, if you cancel away 2 as a common factor, and the difference is also 4. So, coming back to our examples, fractions to ratio. So, suppose 3 quantities are in the ratio half is to 1 by 3 is to 1 by 5. We can take them as half x. The quantities could be half x. 1 by 3x and 1 by 5x and there has to be some additional information because with just the ratio having been given the information to find out exactly what the quantities are if there is insufficient information hence we need more information to calculate hence you need one more set of information as I told in this particular case you have you have the ratio as well as the difference so hence we have a Better summary of what we learned about ratio. Let's check what we have further. Let's move ahead. Okay, here as I told you earlier, A by B is a ratio. When you're talking about a ratio with two terms, the first term or the antecedent is the first term, A by B, and the second term or consequent is called B, which is called second term or the consequent. And remember one more thing I told you once again, two things. One is the inverse ratio B is to A, then the consequent and antecedent get interchanged.
right? So the inverse ratio of A by B is going to be B by A. And remember once more, if two terms of two terms are A and B, but the quantities are not A and B, the quantities could be AX and BX. So this is something we need to constantly remember. Let's move ahead. Now let's take this example. Ratio of two quantities is 3 to 4. If the antecedent is 15, the consequent is what we need to do. Now the ratio of two quantities is 3 to 4. So we could take them as 3 upon 4. And the antecedent is 15. As I told, the antecedent means the first term is 15. What is the second term? And obviously, if two things are in a particular ratio, both these quantities are going to be equal. So, in such a case, x would be equal to 15 into 4. If we cross multiply upon 3, hence you have 3, 5 into 4, 20. Hence, the antecedent is 20. We can check up and see. If you see 15 upon 20 is also, if you cancel by 5, we get 3 is to 4. So, if you look at it, this value of 20 satisfies this particular condition. So the answer is 20.